Okay? Now, when we studied capacitors, we did what's known as RC circuits, right? And we even did labs on them. So this is going to be similar to that. We'll, let's first see an LR circuit. So we have a resistor and we have an inductor. And <clears throat> let's see what the purpose and what's the use of the inductor in that circuit. What does it do? Remember for the capacitor, we notice that when you hook it up, it takes some time for the capacitor to charge, and that's the, the time constant tau for the RC circuit, right? For RC circuit, the time constant was just RC. So what's the time constant of this circuit going to be? Let's derive that. OK, so let's say we close it. Let's first try to analyze logically what should happen. OK? You close it, all of a sudden the battery says, boom, I want the current to go through the circuit. So it pushes the, uh, the electrons and stuff. So current all of a sudden is introduced into the circuit. The inductor doesn't like that. Inductor doesn't like changes in things, OK? So as a matter of fact, the inductance of an inductor is defined as EMF over di dt. So as soon as you introduce current, the rate of current is a rate of change of current is high, right? All of a sudden, you're introducing new current. So di dt is really high. So the EMF that it's going to produce is what? The, the EMF that the inductor is going to uh, produce, the, in the EMF of the inductor, is depends on its inductance times the rate of change of the current. So when you initially introduce the, the, the current, the rate of change of current is high. So the EMF it produces is very high. So and the, it's, it's actually equal to the EMF of the battery, the voltage of the battery. So that means the initial current is going to be very low. The, the, the inductor is almost going to act like if it is a battery, like if it is a battery that's pointing the other way, fighting against the original battery. So the I would expect the initial current to be low, but the initial rate of ch current change to be high. So the I is low, but the I dt is high. But after a while, as current keeps building up, the inductor says, OK, not bad. The di dt goes down, current goes up. So I would expect the current to look like this kind of a function. Asymptotically reaching the final current. So current starts out 0, but the rate of di dt, di dt is high. Right? So the, its slope is pretty steep. But then it goes, it goes, it goes, and then it settles down. OK? So the voltage in the voltage across the resistor, voltage across the resistor is IR. So its graph will look exactly the same as the I. The voltage across the resistor starts low and then plateaus. And the final voltage across the resistor will equal to the voltage of the battery. It plateaus it's asymptotically to the voltage of the battery. So if therefore the final current plateaus to whatever the voltage of the battery is divided by the resistance of the circuit. OK? Now, what should the voltage of the inductor look like? The voltage of the inductor should look like the derivative of this. So first, it's high. So the derivative of this is VB. And then it goes down. And as you, as you go, as it plateaus, the derivative of it is 0. So it plateaus, 
and the final, final voltage of the inductor is zero. So after a while, when the inductor gets used to it, it doesn't resist you much. Now, this is opposite to how the capacitor was, right? If you went to the capacitor circuit, again, I always like comparing old information, old concepts to new. When you close it, charge begins to build up. So initially, the charge on the capacitor is 0. Therefore, the voltage across the capacitor is initially 0. But as, as charge builds up, builds up, builds up, the positive charge builds up here, negative charge builds up there. So the, eventually, the capacitor begins to act like a battery that is opposing you. So the, eventually, the capacitor acts like a battery that's opposing you. But the inductor acts that way way at the beginning. And then it doesn't oppose you. So capacitor and inductor affect the circuit differently. And this is going to be the basis of our whole lecture in chapter 33 when we go to AC circuits. And we talk about inductors and resistors and capacitors. And we're going to see that an inductor and a capacitor have opposite roles. And they balance each other's uh, role, you know. So the, uh, the voltage across the capacitor starts out zero, builds up, whereas the voltage of the inductor does the opposite. Okay. Now the discharging circuit is will be opposite too. When you open it, the the capacitor will uh, discharge. Um, when you open it, the capacitor will di well actually when you open it, you gotta hook it up like this, right? So that the capacitor now can discharge through the resistor. So the capacitor will charge uh, will discharge uh, asymptotically, and the, this one. Let's see this one. When you discharge it, what will happen? When you discharge it, all of a sudden, now you're trying to drop the current, right? So the inductor says, no, 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 no. I just got used to it, man. I just got used to a, a steady current. And all of a sudden, you're trying to drop it. So if you, if you open it and connect the inductor with the resistor, the inductor doesn't like it. So the initial voltage of the inductor should be high, OK, when you discharge it. The voltage of the inductor should be high. And then it should plateau to asymptotically to 0. So it always doesn't like changes. That's the way you should think of it, OK? Now, the formal, formal proof of this is, again, same way that we did RC circuits to do a differential equation. You say voltage of the inductor plus voltage of the resistor is equal to the voltage of the battery. They're in series. And the voltage of the inductor is L di dt plus the voltage of the resistor I dr, uh, IR. All right. So we want to solve for uh, what is the current in the circuit. So this is, this is a typical differential equation, OK? So the solution of this differential equation is I is equal to some constant E to some constant BT plus another constant C. Remember, we did that way? Then we say di dt is going to be A, B, E to the BT. And then you put that into the differential equation, C what the uh, requirements on the A, B, and C are. So what is that going to be here? Uh, you put this uh, L, di dt you put here. And then the current R you put this times the resistor. And then that's equals VB, voltage of battery. Then you multiply it all in, and then you factor out either the BT and you multiply